Ugh. Oh, sorry, I was just cracking my old man back. When it comes to anime, I'm an old ass man, bro. At least by today's standards. Two years ago, I could have listed every single thing dropping that season. Now motherfuckers are talking about you need to watch My Stepsister's My Ex-Girlfriend, which is a real thing. This, this is not a joke. Who the fuck came up with this title? I got this video called Anime Used to Hit Different, in which I kind of discuss how even though the 2010s was not that long ago, it feels like it's been eons when it comes to anime because of how much shit has changed. The landscape is so drastically different from even five years ago. But I saw something the other day that made me go from feeling like a grandpa to feeling like a damn near mummified corpse. Spy Family. That manga that just got an anime last season. It's hella popular, it's wholesome, it's amazing. I'm sure you're watching it. Yeah, that show already has season two announced. And it comes out this fucking fall. Holy fucking shit, I'm getting old. If you're not big into anime, you might not understand how mind-blowing this is for me. I have never seen a season 2 for an anime turn around that fast. The break between both parts isn't even 6 months. And yeah, I'm sure they just produced both seasons simultaneously, but even that is impressive considering how archaic most Japanese companies are. It used to be that when an anime ended, it wasn't like, huh, I wonder when season 2 is gonna come out. No, motherfucker, you have to pray for that shit. Bow to your Japanese overlords and hope for retribution. I know we complain about Attack on Titan Season 4 Part 3.5 Definitive Edition Redux, but it's at least preferable to the 5 fucking year gap we had between Seasons 1 and 2. There are two videos on YouTube, one by Rasputin and one by Nathan Zed that explore the anticipation and frustration that come from waiting on the release of new video games and music respectively. They're both pretty fantastic and got me to consider the relationship between the anime community and waiting and how it's different in many ways but also not, and how it's continued to evolve over the last couple of years, culminating in the return of some series we never thought we'd fucking see again, and some that I desperately hoped we wouldn't. My name's Ibi792, and let's discuss Waiting on Anime. I think the best way to start understanding how waiting for an anime is different from waiting for other art forms is understanding how the industry differs. In the West, on traditional TV and even streaming, a studio orders a certain amount of a show and then they make that amount and are very clear if they want more. A show like Invincible drops its first season, gets super popular and or critically acclaimed, and then Amazon comes out and is like, hey, yo, we heard you like that first season, baby. Here's two more, ya monkeys. And we all hoot and holler and get excited for the next season. In this way, being a fan of a Western show is like being in a healthy romantic relationship. Your partner is always communicating and informing you about decisions. And even if you don't always agree with some of their choices, at least you always know what's going on. Japan, on the other hand, ghosted you a year ago and will send nothing but the occasional gaslighting I miss you text, only to once again fall off the face of the earth after you've had rough consensual sex. They don't make fucking sense in Japan. These studios will adapt the most hyped up manga as a base, have Japanese William Shakespeare write the script, get the zeistiest animators to cook up some supreme visuals, combine it all into an absolute heat sandwich of an anime that everyone loves and praises and probably makes hella fat stacks, and then fuck off and act like they don't even know the series ever existed. These shitters have us foaming at the mouth for these series just to pull it all away. This, this is psychological trauma. Just announce a next season bro. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like please, if I don't get a Noragami season 3 soon, I, I think I'm gonna spontaneously combust. See, funnily enough, anime most of the time isn't really an independent medium. They're made specifically to advertise the manga. Think of your favorite show as a glorified YouTube mid-roll. Except the animators making it never get paid, haven't seen sunlight in a number of weeks, and get their recaps broken in if they ever try to leave. This is pretty much the reason why productions weren't created with a second season in mind. They're meant to just be advertising the manga. They wanted people to go and read it and buy volumes and fuck off somewhere else. Making more of an adaptation defeated the whole purpose of that. Wow, look at me info dumping on main. I feel like a professor. Due to all that glibly glop I was saying before, when it comes to anime fans, waiting is less of a painful inevitability and more of the prolonged inhalation of pure hard copium. And like any good drug, the best way to consume copium is by ingesting it straight through your veins. How do anime fans go about doing that you may ask? By becoming a filthy manga reader of course. Anime is very unique as a medium because hype shows are almost always a known quantity. When you look at games or music, unless they're part of some sort of series, you almost have no idea what you're gonna get. Sure, this game studio may have a great track record, but that won't stop them from dropping a cyberpunk or an anthem. Sure, Drake is one of the most prolific rappers of all time, but that doesn't mean his new album won't be shitty sex anthems for 30-year-old nutwriters masquerading as dance music. Most other mediums have to create anticipation through pre-established creators, franchises, or the merit of the snippets they display. Anime isn't really like that. The fact that manga and by extension light novels exist means that the majority of the time, we know exactly which shows are going to be popular, how good they're going to be, and how long they're going to be good long before they even air. There are other factors such as the staff working on it or the existence of OVAs, but even mediocre productions can 
can be big and the majority of popular shows are manga first. Imagine if before Elden Ring came out we had this group of people going, Haha, I already know it's gonna be great. I read the manga dude, just wait till you get to the millennia arc. That shit's gonna be peak bro, I swear. Manga almost single handedly controls the hype discourse around anime, since not only does it usually decide which shows get popular in the first place, it also decides what even sticks around anime wise. If something's manga ends early or just isn't selling well, it might not even continue. Manga readers will tell you long in advance what you should be excited for. And since most of them haven't seen an ounce of sunlight since Pokemon Go dropped in 2016, they'll probably spoil it for you too. Having manga or a light novel as a substitute is a pretty great form of cope, and makes waiting on an anime to come out a lot easier. Even if you may never get to see a series animated with all the Sakuga and soundtracks you've imagined for years, at least you can still see where the story goes and consume that unaltered narrative. Unlike fans of other mediums, we can numb the pain by learning to read. But some people don't like to read, or more likely, they don't know how. So over the years, people have become kings of puffing on that cope, having to find other shows to fill the void of ones we've lost. Like I said, just cause something got a season, maybe even multiple, doesn't mean it's ever gonna get another one. There are a ton of notoriously unfinished shows, including No Game No Life, Dead Men Wonderland, Bleach, Clash of the Elite, and Devil is a Part-Timer, among many others. But recently things have begun to shift and we see both newer shows getting seasons pumped out faster and long dead series getting a revival. Three of the shows I mentioned earlier are finally continuing after years of hiatus and I don't think I've ever seen fans so fucking feral. And I don't blame them, it's really fucking exciting. I've been waiting on Devil as a Part-Timer for so long and it's probably not even gonna blow my mind, but I don't care. Just knowing it's coming out makes me happy. A lot of the most anticipated anime dropping this year are sequels, some of which had another season kind of up in the air and unconfirmed. And it's so much more satisfying satisfying seeing them continue rather than anxiously waiting for something that may never release. This shift in industry standard also comes with shifts in the audience's expectations. It's not 2010 anymore, Japan can't keep fanning Boomer and going, uh, what? You guys actually want us to animate more of this critically acclaimed and extremely profitable series? Oh, little poopsie whoopsies! We didn't know you wanted a second season! We assumed you'd all make like good little buck and bitches! And read the manga for mommy! Hop that copium like a good little dust can! People are trained to expect stuff faster now, and while anime takes a long time to make and is a lot of work, I can't see anyone waiting 9 years to see a 2022 series to get a second season in the same way many people consistently carry the torch for stuff like Devil's a Part-Timer or No Game No Life because that precedent doesn't exist anymore. Anime fans are entitled little bitch babies, but even they are willing to wait for something good. But when a wait is drawn out too long, excitement turns to resentment. There's this passage in this book I love named Name of the Wind, which was later cited by Raz, that encapsulates this feeling perfectly, and it reads as follows. When you wait a few span or a month to hear a finished song, the anticipation adds savor. But after a year, excitement begins to sour. And yeah, waiting fucking sucks. While anticipation and hype can be a lot of fun, I'm sure most people would want to be able to experience something when they're most excited about it, which is almost never by the time it's released. Luckily for us anime fans, things in our sector are improving. Sure, we still have fuck shit like Netflix releasing JoJo's annually like it's fucking Call of Duty, but generally we have a lot to be excited about. Things are looking up. We are eating damn good. So if you're waiting on something, especially if it's something that's at least confirmed to exist, whether that be a game, an album, a book, an Ibida MP4 video, fucking JoJo, or even a new season of that one show that's definitely never getting another season, just sit back, relax, clear your head, and huff that coping a little longer on me. I'm sure your time will come. Yeah, good morning. Namaste, what's up gang? You made it to the end of the video, which means you might just be the GOAT. If I made you chuckle or something, if it did, consider tossing a like or a share or a sub my way. Sub your lord and savior, EB, the MP4, to be a peak human, and dislike if you're a right cunt. Ben Kai! You heard the lady. I wouldn't disappoint her if I were you. For the regulars here, you already know it's that part of the video where I talk about random shit for like a minute and a half. I almost forgot to include this, but I have a kind of cool announcement thingy. Made y'all a little playlist. It's basically all the music I've ever used on a video, front to back. There are two versions, one on YouTube and one on Spotify. The YouTube one is just there. If you head over to my channel's playlist tab, you'll see it. And the Spotify one will be linked down below or at ibi.mp3 on Spotify. The Spotify one also has like extra just bonus tracks I liked just because just I could. 
good. This was one of the scripts I wrote while producing the Bleach video, so I just wanted to dole this out real quick. It's, it's a bit all over the place, but it's too it's too late. I already made it. I'm not gonna lie, kind of been taking L's lately, boys. I went to Rolling Loud Music Festival all the way in Miami, Florida, which was a lot of fun, except Kid Cudi left early, Cardi left early, and Kanye showed up when I wasn't there. I also lost my phone in a little Uzi mosh pit, then came home and was chilling only to find out that I got the good old COVID-19, baby. So yeah, at the time of recording, I feel like Boo Boo or Ringa take ass. But fuck it, we ball. It's giving me a hell of time to play multiverses, which is great right now. Uh, I'm in an Aria, and uh, to, to play Bayonetta 1 again, so it ain't all bad. I'm also watching Solar Opposites on Hulu and some anime shit, so that's always great. Alright, I gotta go back to blowing chunks out of my nose and uh, running 2v2s. Look out for the next video whenever that shit comes out. And, you know, keep it schmoovin'. Uh, I'll see you later. Damn, bitch! It was just an itty-bitty roach!